do a house wash and a concrete wash all at the same location. Uh, I was supposed to do it during the week, but I had a rough week with work. I just got a little bit backed up. So here it is, Sunday morning, uh, and I hate it, but I got to get this done. She's she's ready to pay. We shook hands on it. You know, we made the deal. Um, so we're gonna do it. But so before I go. A lot of y'all's questions, let's answer them real quick. What size pump? It's four gallon per minute, uh, 4,000 PSI, and I know that because it says it right here. All right, it gives you the model or the engine oil to use, or the pump oil, what type of pump oil to use. Here's your sight glass, so make sure you got it in your, the center of your sight glass. This is the Honda GX270, uh, so I believe it's like a nine horse engine. Um, really kind of needs to be an 11 horse to run a 4 gallon pump, 4,000 PSI, but it does fine for soft washing, but you will see it working and you'll hear it working pretty hard when it comes to the surface cleaning. Um, so your engine oil is right here, check your engine oil, make sure it's at the top here, almost ready to drip out, screw it back on. You got your on off switch right here and you got your low oil uh, wire right here. Okay, so the picture might be a little bit grainy right now because I'm going to zoom in. Um, so right here is your low engine oil. What that means is if you have this in your pickup truck or a trailer and you got your trailer jacked up to your truck or your pickup truck is jacked up in the back or lower in the back, if you don't have engine oil uh, where this sensor is, this sensor is going to turn your engine off. So if your engine runs good when it's cold but, but turns off when it's hot, that means your engine oil might be low because it's getting thin and it's lubricating all the way around so it's bringing it down in the sump and this might be turning it off. So check your engine oil if you're having issues keeping your, your, your uh, pressure washer running. Um, so this is the unloader valve right here. So this will come and I don't know, up or down, one way or the other. When you let off the trigger and it backs up the pressure, it then sends the water through here back into the fresh water in and circulates it so it doesn't start boiling, fizzing, and cavitating your pump, okay? So that's your unloader valve. This is your downstream chemical injector. But then it says don't run bleach through my pressure washer and you're running bleach. Your pressure washer is right here. This, this would run bleach through your pressure washer. All right. So if you're, you're siphoning below your pump where it's in, then yeah, you're running bleach through your pump and you're going to have a problem. This is after the pump. Okay, downstream. That means it's downstream. So like if you pee here, the, the pee goes that way, downstream. You're peeing downstream, all right? I know pee is gross, but you get my point, right? So, so if you're peeing here, it's not going up to your feet. It's going downstream, okay? Same with the bleach. The bleach is coming in and going downstream to your pressure washer hose, to your wand, to your deal, all right? That's a downstream chemical injector. It's after the unloader valve. It's after the pump, okay? That's going to be regardless of any pump that you use. Any pump that you use. Your, your siphon should be after the pump. All right? But Dan, I don't have a downstream chemical injector like that. Can I add one? Yes, you can, but I can't help you because I've never done it. But yes, you can. People have done it. Just plumb it in. Go buy one. I link to them in my video descriptions. Buy one. Size it up to where your hose is connecting. Disconnect your hose. Go to Home Depot or Lowe's. Get some stainless steel connectors and connect it. They'll help you in the plumbing department. So you can do that, okay? If you need to add oil to your pump, it's a little plug right here, add your oil to your pump. That's it. We've got 150 uh, feet of good quality pressure wash hose, 3 8 diameter. Um, if you don't have good quality hose and good quality connectors, you're going to create back pressure in your line, and back pressure is going to shut your siphon off, and you're not going to be able to siphon bleach. So if you can't siphon bleach, if, si if it's not working, make sure you got the black tip on your wand. If you do, and it's still not working, take the hose off right here and just turn on your garden hose and let it just run free and you should feel a little suction right here. Okay? If you do, great. Turn your pump on, let it come out. It ain't going to blow a hole in the wall. Just let, it, let the water come out with the pump on and see if you got a suction. If you do, disconnect your wand, connect your hose. Did you lose your suction? If you did, then you have a problem with your hose. If you did not, then, then leave the hose connected and add your wand. If you did not lose suction, then everything's good. If you did lose suction, then you have a problem with your wand. And then add your black tip. Did you lose suction? No? Then everything's good. If you did, then it's the black tip. It's the wrong tip. Okay, so just process of elimination to figure it out. And also, these downstream chemical injectors, 
have a little arrow right here to make sure that you're going the right way. All right, if you're not going the right way, this won't siphon properly. So make sure you install your downstream chemical injector the right way. Uh, as far as bleach is concerned, we're going to use my favorite 10.0% sodium hypochlorate pool essentials, pool essentials from Walmart. Uh, $3.64 a gallon. I got four gallons to do this house. I do not spray down the bleach or bleach on like concrete and stuff like that because um, I don't like to put chemicals down the drain and it's going down the drain. Um, so I usually don't, I don't use like acids and bleaches and stuff like that on the concrete. I know people say, damn, why don't you? Because I don't like to do that. Um, I just don't. I think it does a good enough job and the customers are always happy. Could it be better? Perhaps. Um, but I charge a fair price for a fair job and I do it the way I want to do it and I don't like putting bleach down the drains. Not like that. I just don't like doing that. Um, I smell people pre-treating their concrete with an acid. I smell it. Two, three yards down mowing, I smell it. I, I don't like that. So um, as far as doing like the house and stuff like that, it thins out and it goes into the soil and the, you know, the grass soaks it up and everything. It doesn't go into your water table. It doesn't make it that far. It's not that much. So um, I can justify it that way. Also, uh, they're going to have a, these people have a painted porch in the backyard, but it's in terrible shape. The paint is chipping off real bad from the dogs, from age, from deterioration. Um, so I, it's not a good, how you doing buddy? It's not a good um, deck for me to show you what we can do with painted wood because it's, the wood is trashed. Um, so I just want to let you know that up front because people are going to say that I did it and I didn't do it. I've been mowing this yard for a while and, and that's the way the porch is. It's, the porch is just very old. It needs to be pressure washed with a pressure tip um, or sanded down with a, with, a, with a big surface sander and redone. All right. Um, I don't do that sort of stuff. I don't do painting. I don't do prep for painting. I don't pressure wash paint chips off into off of a house or off of wood or anything like that, she can hire a painter to do that stuff. I clean. That's all I do is clean. Um, that's what I do. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get this loaded up. Another question you guys have pretty big time is how do you load this thing up? And so let me show you. This is just a little wood pallet. It's like a almost a four by uh, five by four maybe. I don't know. Um, this was a perfect size fit for my uh, Ford Explorer Sport Track, and I can shut the tailgate, so it's kind of nice. Uh, but yeah, all you do, grab it underneath here. This is just bolted to the wood. Grab it underneath here. Give it a lift. Exercise your noodle arms. Get it to the tailgate. Once you have it to the tailgate, you have to lift and push at the same time. It's not the easiest thing to do. That's what you got to do. And I have a bad arm. How red is my face? We're loaded up. It got stuck right here. There you go. Not the lightest thing to do, but that's how I do it. To get it out, it's a little bit easier to get it out. Also, if you have a skateboard, put a skateboard on the ground, put it down on a skateboard, and you can just scoot it over. Okay, so when it comes to mixing the bleach, you guys know my deal, right? about one ounce of Dawn per gallon of bleach that we're going to use, bleach, sodium hypochlorite, whatever you want to call it. Um, sodium hypochlorite is, is the active ingredient in bleach. So that's what you're looking for. If you have, if you have 8%, 8.25%, uh, 6.0%, up to 10%, then I do not thin it out. I put the bleach straight in the bucket and I put about an ounce of Dawn, um, usually just blue regular dish soap Dawn, this is what I got. So I'll put about an ounce per gallon that I'm going to put in here. One, two, three, four, and a little more for good measure. 
That's going to act as a surfactant. It's going to help loosen up the dirt, spider webs and stuff like that. Gets behind it, loosens it off the surface and allows it to rinse a lot cleaner. Also, it gives you suds when you're applying your soap. It gives you suds. You can see that your siphon's working properly. You don't have to worry about it. You see it right away as you're moving along. Um, it does that as well and it also helps prolong this from uh, drying up on the house, which isn't a big deal. Uh, people have asked me that, hey Dan, what if the stuff goes dry as you're you know, washing the house down? Is that bad? No, just rinse it off and it'll reactivate it, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, uh, what's the word? Evaporate maybe? Uh, when you spray this on and if you got the sun beating directly on a surface, you know, within five minutes it might be dry. Um, it's still doing some of its work, okay? If you add soap, it buys it a little bit more time. It leaves it a little bit sticky, a little bit tacky, and allows this to work a little bit longer. Then when you come back along and rinse, you can rinse it, and if you still see there's a little bit of yuck on your house, then you can just hit it with a little bit of rinse water, kind of resuds it up a little bit, and you can wait. Go smoke a cigarette, listen to a song, do something, come back in a few minutes, and the wall will be clean, and you can rinse it off. Maybe I'll be able to show you that over here, maybe not. The part of the house that's the worst part of the house is the west, and the west has tall bushes. So there's not going to be a whole lot of vinyl showing um, where, where you know, the, the worst part is, but we're still going to try to get in there and do the best job that we can and let it rinse down and, and clean the vinyl. Um, by her front door, there's a peak and a peak at the roof, and what happens is that the tar shingles leave a tar streak going down the vinyl. Will I get that off? No. From experience, I know I will not get that off. Will I make it look better? Yes. Did I tell her, hey look, there might be some stains that stay on your gutter and that stay like those rust, those, uh, those tar stains. There's like chimneys are real bad about that. They'll have like little tar stains coming down from where they put the flashing around. They smear it with some tar and they stick the flashing and then they, they nail gun it on and then that tar drips down from weather and stuff like that. So there might be a little bit of discoloration coming down. Will it look better? It'll look a lot better. Um, but I'm not going to get it off. I'm not going to use harsh chemicals. And I'm not going to use a scrub brush. I'm just going to make it look better. But, there, you know, but the house is going to look really nice when I'm done. The concrete, she's going to be very, very happy. But it's not going to be spotless because she let it go too long in between. And I'm not going to go through with scrub brushes and charge her $500 to do this job. It's just she can't afford it. And I'm not interested in it. We're going to do a nice quick wash, a nice quick surface clean, and we're going to go. Um, this is the old lady down the road. I mow her lawn with the neighbor's lawn at the same time. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So we got the soap in here. We'll add the bleach when I get there because I don't want bleach splashing around in my truck. Um, and then we stick the siphon hose in, we fire this bad boy up, and we go to work. Okay, real quick, uh, let's talk about tips real fast and the wand and the wand extension. So I'm going to use this wand right here and the trigger that it has on it is a 10 gallon, 10.4 gallon per minute trigger. This means that it's safe for using hot water if you had a hot water tank. What's the, what's the deal with hot water? It's, hot water helps break the viscosity of, of, of oils and greases and stuff like that. So when people say, how do you get oil stains off of a driveway? Hot water. Um, you really need hot water to break up that, that oil. Um, I don't do that. I tell them it'll just look better. It ain't going to be perfect. They want perfect, go pay someone else and they have that stuff. I don't. Um, and I don't, I'm not, I don't, I just do this as a side hustle. I don't want that stuff. Um, so this, like I said, 10.4 gallons per minute means this wand will put no restrictions in my hose so my siphon should work good. You got the end here where you put your tips, right? But I also have this extension and the extension for the surface cleaner so I don't have to break my back goes right in here but there's some wiggle wobble in here so I'm curious to see if it's going to even seal I'm not sure if it will so we might not be able to use this today um, this is a second story tip that you can buy different places it just goes in it's got the same end as you know a regular tip and then but it's long with a hole a big hole so it continues to siphon but it shoots the water farther much like the tip I usually use which is the pink tip. See, the pink tip is not the red tip. The pink tip has a big hole, so it siphons and shoots the water, water, water further. We're probably not going to need this or this today because it's a one-story house. I don't need it for my house. 
uh, but we'll keep it on us. This is the black fan tip, your soap tip. This is what I use to apply soap and bleach and rinse. All I do is pull the siphon. I never use pressure. The only time I use pressure is if I'm doing brick or if I'm doing surface. And I don't do brick very often. The brick on these houses is so little and it, I guess they're just too new. We don't have a problem with brick getting ugly in these areas. Um, so this is your black fan tip. Now, most pressure washers come with multiple tips. Here's a green tip. Green is safe. All right, it's, it's gonna have a little bit of a wider fan, but it's a pressure tip, it's not for soap. All right, white um, is usually the tip that I use for rinsing as I'm doing the concrete. So you'll probably see me pop the white tip in after I do some surface cleaning, and I'll pop the white tip in to just blow stuff away to keep my surface clean for the camera. So everything looks good for you guys. All right, black and white and pink. They're usually the three tips I always use. I never use this. The blue tip comes with the pink tip and I link to the pink and the blue tip in my video descriptions. This shoots water far with pressure. It's not going to shoot soap. It's going to put back pressure in it so it's going to close your siphon. But this is going to be good if you've got a wasp nest or something up on a second story you need to try to power it off. This helps reach that. We're not going to need this today. And like I said, the green tips, you get green tips with your pressure washers. Green is safe. It's not going to put too much. It's not like a pinhole like the red tip. The red tip could really cause damage. Um, then you have green, you have yellow, you have red. Um, green, of course, would be your safest pressure tip to use. Yellow, a little bit of caution required. Red, danger. You can really hurt yourself or somebody with the red tip. All right, white, I don't know where white falls in the mix of green, yellow, and red, I think it's close between a green and a yellow, I guess, I don't know. But that's the three tips I use, okay? Um, I never use pressure to rinse the vinyl, ever. Um, don't need it, I see people doing it, drives me absolutely apeshit, I hate when people do it. Um, and then the surface cleaner that you'll see me using is the BE Whirl Away, I'll link to it in the video descriptions. It's the 14 inch BE Whirl Away surface cleaner, plugs right into your wand. Um, took me a little while to get used to this, but now that I did, I really like it. It's got the spinning broom in here, um, so the tips are kind of angled back and back, which causes it to spin this way, and this thing spins really fast, and so it's like you're going really fast with the wand. Um, so this just does a large surface uh, much faster than a wand, much faster than the turbo tip, and this, this rocks right here. Um, surface cleaners are the poop. Uh, it's a 14 inch. I have a four gallon per minute, so this is sized up really nice. You're looking for four inches of surface cleaner per gallon a minute pressure washer. All right. So if I had a 20 inch, my pressure washer is just not really going to work that great with it. I'm going to have to go so slow. I should have just saved my money and got this where I can just cut through it. Um, so that's the deal there. So those are tips: the wands, the surface cleaner, the bleach, the prep, the the pump, the pressure washer, and how I get it loaded up. Alright, so next up we'll go ahead and uh, we'll start the video. It'll be the, you know, the next video is going to be what we're going to do. Um, will be the job, you know, doing the job I mean. So it's 7 a.m. on a Sunday, so let me go ahead and get this edited a little bit. Should be a quick edit. We'll get this saving, get this online as fast as possible, and we'll get the pressure wash video up as soon as possible. Just know that while you're watching this, I probably just finished pressure washing. Uh, and I just have to do the edits. So I will, uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Tell me about the whistle. The whistle.